we're back again. My mum has just said, take it away, Gary Lineker. We're not quite at that stage yet, unfortunately, mum, but due to popular demand, you are back. You can only see... Oh, that's the Wolves fan. There's the Wolves fan. So we've got a, uh, a neutral over here and we've got my ever so popular. Where is she? Mum over there. <laughs> so it's going to, be a, going to be a good game today. We've obviously got Aston Villa versus Manchester United at Villa Park and we've, we've been chatting on the way up. Mum's a little bit worried because <laughs> the once fortress of Villa Park has kind of become a bit of a... Basically, Mum, Villa have lost the last two games at Villa Park 3-1. How would you feel about your, your chances today? Not good. Not, not good? No, not good at all. We were at the game at Bramall Lane, weren't we, yeah. last Saturday, mm. all three of us. And obviously Sheffield United made Villa look like Brazil. Yeah. And um, a <laughs> 5-0 smash in. Yeah. Kind of made Villa look amazing, but off the back of the 3-1 loss against Chelsea yeah. on Wednesday, and a couple of bad results for Villa. I think from a Man United perspective, if, if there was ever a time to come to Villa Park and play Aston Villa, it would be right now because Man United uh, have won the last four out of the last five games. The draw being um, the game against Spurs that we saw at Old Trafford. So United are on form despite a, a terrible start to the season. So what do we reckon, Dave? What do we reckon? Uh, I'm going to say, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a 2-1 Man U win. On the positive side, I'm going to say 2-2. 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> two, two. That was going to be my prediction. Oh. I was going to sit on the fence and say 2-2. Two, yeah, two. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah play, it. playing it safe. That's fine. Mm. We'll both say 2-2. Two, two. And uh, we did say on the way up here as well that whoever gets the first goal is most likely going to probably win the game. But then me and you have both gone for 2-2. Two, two. So <laughs> anything can happen today at Villa Park. So we're currently on Vicarage Road. Now, did you say my great-granddad, your yes, granddad, yeah, used yeah. to live here? Yeah. Back in the day? Before they knocked them down, the old houses. So when they were the slums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the former, <laughs> the former slums down here. As you can see, it's a beautiful road now, Vicarage Road. Somebody did comment, actually, Mum, on the Villa Newcastle game. Very broomy accents. And I had to defend you and said, your roots are very much here in Aston. Right, so uh, Mum's on keto or whatever. So she, she was going to throw away her bun. I said, no, don't be throwing away the bun. I'll have a bit of that. So but over, the, over the road over here, you can see the church we mentioned where my grandparents were christened, my great-grandparents were married. Right next to Villa Park. Villa Park's literally over there. You've got the Trinity Road stand down there. Can I just say the Trinity Road stand, the old one? We love mentioning Archibald Leach here on the channel. I believe Archibald Leach was the architect that designed the old Trinity Road stand, the same Scottish architect who designed Fulham's lovely Stevenage Road stand, now the Johnny Haynes stand. Obviously Archibald Leach designed uh, Ibrox and the old Chelsea stand that we mentioned in the Stamford Bridge tour recently. It's a really nice setting. You've got the kind of park area over there, the motorway behind my parents' scranning over there. This is where we did that little shot on the way here. It's a glorious day. You've got the Holt pub just as you enter Villa Park over there. So for those of you who are new to the channel, we do all kinds of stadium tours, new and old, former football grounds that no longer exist. But we do the odd match day vlog as well. And we seem to be doing more and more Villa vlogs because you lot keep wanting my mum on the channel. We're here with my stepdad as well. He's basically acting as security today because she, her popularity has exploded and she might be bombarded with fan interest. So he's here to keep the peace. Anyway, I'm going to scram this bun and I'll see you at my Villa Park. So if you're new to the channel, we always talk about corners of football stadiums. You know how much I love a little cheeky glimpse. There we go, into Villa Park. This is the corner that separates the famous Holt End, Villa's most rowdy of ends, and what was that gorgeous Trinity Road stand. It still looks all right. You've got the tunnel underneath, similar to Old Trafford. Again, we're like three hours before kickoff. The atmosphere is a little bit quiet at the moment, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's gonna be a good one. I've always found it a little bit awkward at Aston Villa versus Manchester United games for obvious reasons. 
But growing up, my earliest memories of Villa versus United here at Villa Park would have to be, I think it was the opening day of the season on the 95-96 season when United wore that infamous grey strip, which started the downfall. Apparently Fergie always hated that strip and he had an eye specialist working for Man United who again said, Fergie, this strip needs to go. But United, I think, lost that game, was it 3-1 possibly? You can't win anything with kids. We need to mention the fact that Villa squandered a 2-0 lead at Old Trafford on Boxing Day. Almost went to that game. Unfortunately, we didn't cover that game on Rise Football Paradise. And can I just mention as well that we have our allegiances on the channel, but the channel is very much a neutral channel. We celebrate everything good about football, hence the name Paradise. This is a place in which we can all share our opinion, but we all share the love of the beautiful game, regardless of who we support, the result and so on. And I'm very much looking forward to what should be an awesome atmosphere. A lot of people took the mick at the Villa versus Newcastle game, all the fireworks before the game. But I must say that Villa Park has the best pre-match atmosphere within the ground out of any of the Premier League stadiums we've been to this season. I mean, the fireworks, I love it. I love that touch. I know it's not very traditional and old school, but the pyrotechnics, the Ozzy Osbourne crazy train banging, banging away. by the, the mural, the kind of achievements on the wall. We love it when football clubs put all kind of artwork and stuff in and around the football grounds, in and around the stadium. Obviously Villa haven't experienced that much success in kind of recent years, over the last maybe 40 years. Most famously, they won the European Cup in 1982. They'd won the league previously the year before in 1981. Ipswich came really close, Bobby Robson's Ipswich. But my mum, uh, my auntie, should I say, Leslie, she was there at the European Cup final in 82. My mum wasn't there. I think she was, I don't know what she was doing. Bit of a bit of a letdown there by the Villa fan. But it's lovely. I mean, I, I always say I'm not going to give away my favourite Premier League stadium we visited this season because we are going to do a video once we've completed all 20. We've only got two more stadiums to visit as a film in this. We've got Brighton's Amex and Luton's Kenilworth Road. But if you just look behind me at the North Stand, it's absolutely beautiful. Villa Park is definitely up there. It's definitely in my top three of football grounds, not only because of the history, not only because of the aesthetics. I love an old school ground, so long as it's maintained, maintained and well kept. The Holt End for me is absolutely gorgeous. The old Trinity Road stand used to look a little bit like the Holt End uh, does now with the steps going up and stuff. But yeah, I always love coming to Villa Park. Every time my mum asks if I want to go, I always say yes. Are you still feeling a little bit unconfident, Mum? Are you still saying? Get a bit more confident. Starting to get a little bit more confident. A little bit more confident. I think it might be 3 2 to Villa. 3 2 to Villa now? <laughs> this is the problem, isn't it? You turn up at Villa Park, you get all excited yeah. and you get swayed, so. Yeah, yeah. 3 2, yeah? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Who's going to score for Villa? DRB. Um, again, maybe one for Ollie. One for Ollie. We've always got to say Ollie Watkins. He's having an absolute blinder, isn't he? And who's going to score the two goals for United? I mean, I've said 2-2, so I suppose I better say who I think might score for United. I'm going to have to go for... I haven't even looked at the team sheet. Do we know who's playing? No. Full team for United. Hoyland's playing, so... Garnacho. Garnacho with a face. Yeah, yeah, with a face. <laughs> Pretty boy Garnacho. I think uh, I think we could go with Hoyland and Garnacho for United's goals. I don't know if, how that sounds to you, maybe. Yeah. I think the opposite, now you say that, I think the opposite might happen to what happened at Old Trafford. I think, I reckon United might go 2-0 up, you know, like Villa did at Old Trafford. And I can see a, an incredible comeback by Aston Villa and Nick in a 3-2. That's a very, that's a very wise, uh, yeah, you're still going 2-1, Dave. I would like to see Villa win. 2-1, get back on track, but yeah. I think I'm still going to stick with 2-1 Man U, I think. 2-1 United. Just typical, isn't it, from the Wolves fan. Doesn't want to see any success coming coming, the, <laughs> coming across the Midlands. 
a little bit disappointed. He's still a bit angry at the, uh, what was it, 2-0 Wolves yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, at the 2-0 loss to Brentford. Obviously, Brentford are back firing with Ivan Tony. Stick Ivan Tony in any team, maybe Arsenal, and you're pushing for the title. I'm buzzing. I'm not going to be quite as buzzing to, to sway my score prediction to 3-2. I'm still going to say 2-2. Come on, let's do this. Did we find out whose car that is over there? Still Jesse Lingard. No, he's in, uh, he's in Japan or something now, isn't he? Korea, yeah. It's reduced now, I think. That's the authentic. Yeah. So, so, mum, real DH gate. <laughs> Where's your DH gate top? <laughs> So mum, that's my that's my favourite that's my favourite away kit of all time. The uh, green and black one. It reminds me of the current Brighton one. What do you reckon? The Muller green and black. Not my choice. Not your but choice. No, but, but the Muller home is yes, beautiful. Got yeah. That. It was a good thing. On the Edson. <laughs> They've always got tickets to everything, do So the police are in full force. It's a man being arrested in the middle of the roundabout. You'd think Millwall were here or a team used to scrapping, but people forget the United were uh, quite a tasty side in terms of, you know, fan base and in terms of a firm back in the day. Obviously, United have massively changed off the back of their success in the 90s, but I very much doubt we're going to get some scrapping today. So we're on Whitton Lane, Mum, isn't it? And what I love about Whitton Lane is, as you head towards Villa Park, you've got all kinds of you've got all kinds of artwork on the walls, which basically document the, the development of Villa Park over the years. Let me get it down there. Where are you? You're at the game today? Huh? What? You're at the game? Yeah. What's your score prediction? Uh, yeah. I reckon 2-1 to one the Villa. Yeah. yeah, 2 one, two one. Yeah. Who's scoring? Ollie Watkins? Maybe not. I'm hoping, yeah. I'm hoping yeah. Alex Watkins will score one. What do you reckon, Alex. mate? What's your score prediction? 2-1. 2-1 two two one as well. Two one Cheers, guys. Thank you. Yeah. I'll follow you, you yeah. lead the way. It doesn't matter, it means you just got to walk along inside. Yeah. Mm. Hello, Wade. Hello. How's it going? Oh, I can never remember that way, isn't it? Yeah. Thank Lovely, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Hello, mate. How are you? The old bar open. I'm going to go to the toilet first okay, and then I'll yeah. get a Coke after. Wait, yeah. I can't remember the toilet. Where are we? Yeah. Oh mate, it's yeah, alright, yeah. You've got a worse barrier than I even know about that. Don't No. Yeah, I probably will after. Before Dad gets in. <laughs> so here she is. Everyone's favourite. You've asked for me mum to be back on a video and here we are. So we're in the Doug Ellis as usual, aren't we mum? Yeah. And uh, very, very close by, you've got the United fans over there. So this is going to be a very interesting game, isn't it mum? Yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> still saying, uh, still, what did you say? 3-2, didn't you outside? Yeah, still saying 3-2. Yeah, yeah, I did change it. I was 4-1 and then 3-2. 3-2. Yeah. I'll still yeah. say 2-2. Two, two, but, but I, some, yeah. Some I, 
Just, uh, just to remind you guys, so United in the last five games, they won four, drew the one against Spurs when we were at Old Trafford. And oh, here he is, here's the Wolves fan. Climb over, Dave. <laughs> and I think when Villa went 15 games, a 15 game winning streak, was that right? Yeah. But then it was so. possibly 16 with a draw yeah. against Sheffield United, wasn't it? Yeah, and then that's it, then that's the end of the run. Really. Villa Park was indeed a fortress. Mm -hmm. It's been a bumpy start to 2024. They're, they're pushing for Europe. Spurs got a late winner yesterday. So their points are important for both teams, probably more important for, for Villa, considering the, you know, their start. But um, unfortunately, if you did see the Villa versus Newcastle game, we've still got the obstruction, the metal bars, which might obscure the view. I have been offered the seat over there, but I thought we'd get close to the United fans to offer both sides, both perspective, because very often when you're in one end, you can't hear the fans on the other end. So people often say, oh, you know, their fans are quiet, but it does depend where you're sat. I think right here, we've got the whole end over there, which I'm sure are going to make a lot of noise. Obviously, United behind. Again, the channel is a neutral channel, and all we want is bloody goals. So from the channel's point of view, maybe a 4-4 or a 5-5 would be delightful from the channel's perspective. <laughs>
So first half analysis. I mean, Villa could probably count themselves quite unlucky to be down at half time. Pretty even game, pretty back and forth. Similar to when Villa played Newcastle, though, United do seem very well organised. I've noticed that every time Villa on, are on the attack, it's Casemiro who would drop deep and almost play as a, you know, as a third centre back. Kobe Mainu seems to be staying a little bit more as a, as a number eight, and obviously Casemiro as the six. Um, but I, I, I'm very surprised that Villa didn't score at the end there. I think I think it's coming. Uh, Watkins has fluffed a few chances. It really could go either way this one. This one. I mean, I predicted two two and. It probably could end up 2-2. But you watch the second half, it'll be absolutely dire. Mum, yeah. how do you think Villa have done in this first half? I do. I think they've played well, just can't score.
guys, back at Footy Paradise HQ. Now, obviously, Villa are going to feel somewhat upset to not come home with at least a point. I've heard some pundits on the way home say that Villa completely dominated the game. I mean, looking at it objectively, subjectively, I'm not sure the correct terminology. I feel like Villa edged the second half, but it very much could have been, could have gone either way. It was a flip of a coin as to the outcome of this game. Villa would definitely feel somewhat upset at half time to go in 1 0 down. It could have been 1 0 up to Villa. You know, it's one of those, again, flip of a coin. But for me, half time was where it completely changed. In the first half, Luke Shaw had that left back position completely on lockdown. As soon as Luke Shaw came off at left back and Lindelof went to left back, I mean, I'm not knocking Lindelof. He's a great kind of backup centre back. But as soon as Lindelof went to to left back I think it was Leon Bailey was coming up against completely exploited him and Villa were having loads of success down Manchester United's left hand side it completely changed the game they were putting the pressure on in that second half it was a matter of time before Villa got the equaliser United were holding on it was very much I knew it was coming I knew it was coming and it was well deserved by Aston Villa to be to go 1-1 at that point all the momentum was with Villa and I was pretty sure that Villa were going to go ahead and win the game 2-1 fantastic cross by Diego Dallo and a fantastic header by do, 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 Scott McTominay. Don't lie, if you're a United fan watching this, when Ten Hag made the substitution and he took Rashford off and put McTominay on, most of us thought the same. Bloody hell, here we go again, Ten Hag. But it was, it was a vital substitution because what happened was, if you noticed, he took off I can't remember who Emery took off. He might have took off Bailey, took off one of the Villa's forward players, put on Tielemans in the centre of midfield. They overloaded that midfield. They were putting the pressure on. Uh, Ten Hag matched that, put Matomini in midfield to kind of level the playing field. And United's balance now that they have Casemiro and Kobe Mainu, both as holding midfielders, both as anchor men in that midfield, in that midfield position is really helping United out. I mean, everyone mentioned like Newcastle's injuries and various other clubs' injuries. I do feel like, obviously, the, the United... United do get a lot of hate, let's be honest. Probably the most hated club in England. And people often bypassed United's injuries and are suddenly acting shocked that United have turned things round now that Luke Shaw's back, now that Casemiro's back, now that some of these vital players are back. It's, it's no kind of accident the United's fortunes have turned around a great start to 2024 for Manchester United and as I mentioned at half time as soon as Villa went on the attack Casemiro would drop deep into almost like well basically a number six role but almost in into like a third centre back and Villa were finding it very hard to break United down in that first half obviously they had more luck down that Villa's right hand side in the second half a cracking game guys and I must hand it to Villa fans some of the some of the best fans in the Premier League. I also find that Villa fans are very humble, uh, never point the blame at anyone in particular, and it's quite easy to get wound up and just start like slagging off United on the way home. But I, I'm always, you know, listening out for fans' opinions, and they were kind of questioning certain, of, you know, certain players of their own. But I honestly feel like Villa shouldn't really have too many questions of their own players. They were really unlucky to not get any points in this game. It wasn't like the game against Chelsea. It wasn't like the game we covered against Newcastle. Both of those very, very poor performances by Aston Villa. This wasn't one of those. I would say United were lucky. They did ride their luck at certain points in that second half. I think that is United's style. It does make me, me laugh when pundits say, I don't know United's playing style. We know you're not his playing style. You see it. As soon as Anana gets the ball, he just slows the play completely down. The fans go nuts, start booing. They slow the pace down United. Just tap it around the defence a little bit. You know, play at their own speed. But then they'll ramp up the speed. Rashford will make a run. Garnaccio will make a run on the other side. And they'll play counter-attack football. United do it most games, especially away. You can't expect United to have all the possession away at Villa Park. As we said, it was a fortress. 15 wins on the bounce, I think, and, and more unbeaten. Um, Villa Park is still a very tricky place to go. I do worry for Villa a little bit slipping down the table. It does remind me a little bit of the 98-99 treble winning season of Manchester United. Villa were top, I think, going into Christmas and then completely um, deteriorated. I think they ended up finishing like 8th or something like that that season. Correct me if I'm wrong, Villa fans. But hopefully um, Villa hopefully Villa do well. I mean, what do you reckon, guys? Let us know in the comments below. Who's going to get that 4th or 5th Champions League spot? If we are, if, if an English club is going to get that 5th Champions League spot, who are you backing? Do you think it's going to be United or do you think it's going to be Aston Villa or do you think it's going to be neither? Next to me right here, guys, you've got some of the items we've got from each of these Premier League tour club visits. We've got two more to do. I don't know if the Nottingham Forest video is up yet. It's probably not. We did a wander around the, the city ground. Unfortunately, the shop wasn't open. 
So we might have to go back there again, but we've got two more to visit. Luton Town's Kenilworth Road and Brighton's Amex Stadium. Villa fans, you know I love you. If you're a subscriber of the channel, you'll know the story of that Muller kit behind me. you know my little story. I've got the Corinthian figures behind. And you know my story probably isn't the most popular of stories with regards to growing up and becoming a fan of a certain club. But remember, we've made a decision on Rice Football Paradise to be somewhat neutral in the way in which we cover football, both from a nostalgic point of view and current modern day football here in 2024. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you have, gently tap that like button, subscribe if you're new and check out these other videos to the side of me. I can't remember which side. Check them out and I'll see you in one of those other videos.